Hello, so far uh, I tried to show you a little about um, what do you call the use of quick uh, prototyping instead of using the word 3D printing and uh, this thing I have tried to for example, in yesterday's lecture I already showed you a little about how to make a cardboard model, how to make things like this. Traditionally all machining, all manufacturing everybody used to do it on their own only it is not fully formalized. But since around 30 years or uh, maybe 40 years since the advent of computer aided design and graphics on a personal desktop has come to be things have changed a little. So, one of probably the earliest one auto discs auto cad release uh, I think 2.6 or something must have been very very old later on it has got stabilized as release uh, 8 release 12 uh, release 14 16 and so on which in principle concentrated on simple drafting means you already have something and do it. But then things have been changing parallelly saying the moment you can modify something without uh, losing anything and it is only you know you can keep uh, several types of files whole concept of saying why cannot we use it on simple geometric design has come about later on huge field has come out saying oh you have so many of them which is related to this computer design then computer manufacture then uh, whole thing called PLM life cycle. So, just let it be there the idea being that you need to uh, use uh, some form of a computer design for you such that you can make use of the facilities that are available. So, in the case of sheet metal if you go to solid works there is a sheet metal extension that is available with that things like bending elements all those things are very much possible. So, I draw your attention to this large number of you have a look at this uh, monitor. So, if you go here my own lectures are there large number of them there on the this thing here as part of the NPTEL channel as part of another lecture series called this uh, what you call um, product design and uh, things related to this parts of what are useful in this current course are also covered there. So, if you see here I will maybe I will show you this a little. It is a short lecture though it says 25 minutes I will just skip through quickly and then see. You have seen this most important is saying anybody can make use of competitive design. And once you start in this CAD very well you can always go on to the next steps. See this is where the important thing comes saying downstream water as you know nebulous concepts in the mind can be made into usable data and the over the wall design you can always avoid completely. And down the steps we have this prototyping. So, prototyping itself no I have already given an example of how well things can be. So, we can have accurate representation of features sizes scaling both in the terms of quantities you can make multiple copies of the same and 
scaling of individual entities you can make them bigger or smaller if once you make a metric proportioned fastener probably you can just uh, you know making it is easy then duplicating if you make one object sometime in your life you can keep using it and build a library and the magic is online lot of this open source are available and you can make things more and more complex. So, this stuff uh, I suggest to go out and uh, see lectures which are part of the other things. This one, this particular you know thing is uh, from a series called the what do you call uh, I have just. <laughs> so, let me start with this particular thing which is in a way a continuation of where I left off yesterday. This one was part of a electronics very very complicated power electronics project seen this year uh, to me it is a little threatening, but then uh, nothing for you to worry about all this stuff now needs to be packaged have seen that not easy no. So, I just we have taken one uh, commercial device and try to understand it as much as we can. There is a cover and then you see you see this detailing of how these uh, things it will in fact if you see it looks a little like a automobile gearbox whenever you see this automobile devices no this detailing has come from there saying we have a counter bore and because it is nearer the edge all the proportions and all have been maintained. This is where uh, I would like to stress. So, if you want to make a duplicate of this just like that are now going to the machine shop and trying to make these things will invariably end up with surprises which we need to prevent. So, what we have done is we have tried to take a I mean this is not a copy or anything we we happen to have this drive and probably sponsored by the company. Now, if you see here including the way these things are strengthened and uh, you see various types of location items all this you now you can learn observe from it while well, I would not call it copying and neither is it reverse engineering neither reverse innovation or anything you know. For a first timer it makes a lot of sense if you make this, this probably are meant for locating. So, that it sits properly and this is for ribs are for strengthening and reducing the weight and then these are the critical things which you need to observe from a equivalent similar thing. It is a little related like search for publications. You have a, a patent search and then you have a search for published data. So, moment you see all this stuff now you will be able to take a little a few details that are required from it and you see here we are slowly coming to the crux of the thing. We went about trying to see if uh, a similar what they call top belongs to the other cover and then whether we can make a similar enclosure, but vastly simplified. If you see the original drive, it had a lot of extra pieces and <laughs> probably one of the rare pictures at the left if you see is a IGBT module which blew its stop as seen here it is an IGBT module which has blown its stop. So, we have all the stuff inside then we have the terminations we have everything and all this now. So, <coughs> a good way to learn may be safe may be unsafe a good way to learn is that now you notice this is very crude the what do you call it is a sand casting simple uh, sand mold alone casting we try to use it. This is where I thought I will tell you that uh, maybe if you had made a small scale model using uh, any of the techniques and specially specifically uh, rapid prototyping. 
obviously we would have saved a lot of time. So, I will stop here, I will just quit this I think enough of it. Now, small portion inside this is the this water cooled cold plate. So, on the top surface we mount the what you call the power devices and the bottom surface is part of the casting. So, that we can make the maximum use of it and what you see here is a, a channels have been made for the cooling of it. Now, is it uh, important here? Yes, of course, it is important here saying we could have avoided several pitfalls which we managed to do. You see here you can see some very interesting thing here. This is made by our student uh, was working on it. You see here this is a first level I will say adaptation of uh, a standard industry practice. So, what has been done is they try to make small channels they are not full fledged micro channels, but however uh, this whole thing is an extrusion that comes directly of a machine and then they try to machine all the parts. After fabricating everything we have discovered that uh, we could have avoided some of the things here. Now, if you see this corner this is where no do you see something here in this corner. The interesting thing are they are not tapered fins because while a tapered fins gives you optimum fin effectiveness. Uh, fabrication is a problem you need to have a special cutter and making it instead we have used two uh, what they call uh, slitting saws and then afterwards uh, first made a groove a 3 millimeter groove after that made a 1.6 millimeter groove and hence you know we get this what is equivalent a little to the best thing what we can uh, a chip. So, I will see if I can have a what you call some graphic uh, yeah I will use an empty slide and see whether I can write a few things on this. See original heat sink involved having to make fins like this. I had explained somewhere else saying why fins should not be thin and long. This type of fins where you have a long deep fin and it is a very small gap and if you keep making things like this, these are useful in the case of natural flow or where the velocity is a small because there is enough flux available and enough time for the fin to reach the same temperature throughout the thing. But if you start cooling it imagine we have air coming out from here in all the directions from one to the other direction you will find that this tip cools fast. and this temperature remains as it is and the moment it comes to 2 here we find the tip may be just about plus 5 degrees above ambient and this may be 50 degrees above ambient. So, this last portion of it is practically not at all useful. So, very rarely very rarely people use such things in the case of fluid cooling instead what is used is a tapered fin with sufficient spacing. 
spacing is to provide for compensation of pressure loss and improve the flow. So, we have enough fluid which is passing there and from here now the heat flux let us say this is the base plate heat flux comes here this whole thing is taken by this section and slowly heat starts flowing here and if the base is typically let us say at 80 degrees centigrade the tip the loss to the tip may be only about 70 degrees centigrade instead of 30 or 40 degrees. Now, if you were to make the same thing and try it on a what you call commercial uh, heat sink, life is going to be not easy. So, at this point uh, only those critical elements which need the actual what you call um, uh, physical simulation we can make it like this else we just need not worry too much about it. See here this part of it is the heat sink and then some channels have been made here and you see this is uh, I mean the thicker and it blocks here and the I think one of these uh, drawings you know huh? water is supposed to enter here and this forms a header input header inlet header same header as you will find in a solar uh, what do you call uh, um, uh, passive solar water heater there you will find a series of pipes instead of that that pipes have been created mini channels have been created by butting that heat sink fins across this. So, you will have this is the header and all the fluid will pass through it can be in the normal course it can be simple uh, uh, water like as in distilled water alternatively it will be same distilled water which is mixed with your refrigerator coolant I am um, sorry yeah. Uh, your automobile uh, what you call water coolant, coolant is a mixture you probably have propylene glycol and uh, anti foaming agents and all that. So, it has certain advantages of maintaining viscosity as well as maintaining conductivity and across all temperatures right from very low to very high temperature. So, if you use one of those car engine coolant liquid here it flows like this afterwards since there is a positive pressure this acts like the next header from here this part of it is the this inlet header this outlet header next this will become the inlet header 2 and this will become the outlet header and this outlet header again becomes inlet header 3 and then it becomes the outlet header and we can go. And if you are to make this properly in a proper uh, what you call uh, software you will notice that you can easily carry on simulation work. If you carry on simulation work, we can estimate the using uh, what you call uh, various types of uh, uh, software possible for us to estimate the heat loss or the heat gained. So, since we already do not have the heat transfer conductivity for this uh, flow we need to if we have a perfect model we can within a very good accuracy within a few temperature of maybe 5 degrees centigrade assuming various parameters including conductivity including the heat transfer coefficient in uh, conversion for this uh, fluid very much possible for us to estimate this. Once you estimate it you can optimize the physical layout of it. Right now the physical layout is almost optimized by 3 IGBT switches we have here. We have 3 switches here and this is just a little more than the switches remaining this much of mass is required for various other uh, parameters. And next is the air flow can easily be modeled. Why I am saying it is if you are to build the whole thing in a 3D printing we would have had something to see we could have opened it we could have found out where to split it 
uh, we learn by our mistakes. So, now if you remember did you did you see that casting which I showed you earlier this is the model of the casting. We have place here for electronics, we have place here for the electronics, this is the cold plate on which devices will come specifically this is probably used to keep uh, DC link capacitors and all that no. This whole thing is very much possible for us to make it this is the bottom portion and you see here all this stuff no is sitting here. The original model because of traditional way of manufacturing drives it had water cooling from here. So, we had a water channel which runs all the way here and inside and lot of other things are there. In our case our interest is only to cool this and also estimate the temperature rise and the maximum we can go with. See as things are placed things are getting very interesting here can you see here now all the other details including the way these micro mini channels will work including a you know water inlet here and a water outlet whole thing has been made here which I feel is part of the what I call new wave uh, you know electronics uh, design. Now, if you see we cannot isolate it saying this is only meant for you know to be handled by one person or the other advantage of following our uh, this new system is same model can be used by the mechanical or people who are working on the heat transfer to model it including you know materials and all that. Same thing about how much of area is available and how to make a physical layout of the unit can be made use of by the layout people and because in the case of these we are switching large current 1000 amperes and we are switching at a little higher frequencies. Now, again suddenly as the frequencies you know kept going up in small thing it was uh, welcome. Now, it looks like everything is coming but down to something which will give us a cleaner power supply. And so, the same model can be used for physically modeling the fluid dynamics part of it and the same thing can be used in the manufacturing process. This is only for reference to see you know typically how much these things are probably yeah I have come to the end of this. Now, yeah. This is taken from our machine shop. So, well it looked neat and clean there the in reality you know there are chips everywhere. So, and then lot of other further processes are there. Right now because of our uh, what do you call um, you see here now this what I was trying to tell you. This is still partly in the process. First this opening has been made with a larger slitting saw after that a smaller slitting size open. So, in principle except for the little bit of you know this accumulated errors you need to ignore the this accumulated errors, but in general no in general if you see it follows what we were looking for saying I need to have a thick base and then a little thinner profile. Now, this phase will meet the other face on the other side and then you see what this is here. This intentionally has been made as a separate piece saying do we does it those channels do they really behave the way we want with uh, you know an S shaped uh, thing going on like this or if we remove it maybe we have one uh, you know what you call input header and one output header and uh, the flow will be better and about the same heat transfer coefficient we can get. So, this has been attached here. So, if we do not want it to avoid uh, this thing no eventually for ease of fabrication maybe you can just remove all these things and make things a little more easier for us. Can you see here things slowly you know they seem to be coming here this is the other part. Now, this part 
this part will go and sit in the other one. So, the small ridges you see there will all sit in these grooves. We have a groove, understand this is the outside, then we have one, two. So, <coughs> the fluid is supposed to come here and it go around and all that. Eventually, if we find that uh, the, there is not much of heat gained, maybe all we need to do is open it and remove this small um, flow diverters and the, all the water will uh, the what they call uh, liquid coolant when come and will go and will go away and uh, the probably total pressure loss will be less and flow will be better. And uh, our electronics engineer uh, Professor Ruman and uh, has suggested if we make all the openings and all little large, is it possible for us to make simple thermo siphon? Saying if you just need it, need to tilt it a little, maybe you know, keep it at uh, 60 degrees or so. So, maybe the fluid will all you know come here, go that side, and we can avoid one unreliable pump. If we avoid the unreliable pump, we have something which is passive. So, while this is made for a drive for a uh, I expect to an electric motor, similar drives can be used even for power transmission and all that and we try to make them as passive as possible by preventing components like fans. So, while this part of it we try to make it uh, you know flow easily, correspondingly we have this part of it loosely let me call it a evaporator, then we have a condenser. Alternatively, this is the hot what do you call heat exchanger, then we have a heat exchanger to the ambient. Both of them even there, there is a fan. If you now invert it or keep it horizontal, we can have a whole system which works only in natural thermo siphon. So, we have been uh, trying to see if we can eventually make all these things here. Can you see this again? This is something which we managed to get from the workshop. I thought I should uh, show you these things. I am a little thrilled, yeah, I think this is all then, yeah, these are this has been provided from the solid works file seen that no, this is the one which I have shown you separately. So, unfortunately these things uh, have to tell, uh, let me show you his. See here this is where the water opening comes and you see here this is taken from an earlier concept where we wanted to machine this whole thing like this, then we have found out it is a wasteful and you know unnecessary thing. The corresponding thing what we need to make in the heat sink, we have to make all this funny stuff. Instead, it has been just machined through using uh, probably a 6 mm or an 8 mm end mill, the whole thing has been machined through. Same end mill has run here and to make multiple parts the same file which is used now. The G code file can be used here so that the whole thing can be machined directly using a CNC machine. And you see here interesting thing is we have a fluid inlet. So, we have a fluid inlet here, fluid inlet and how the whole thing comes out. So, very happy to see that uh, these things work easily and magic thing is we have all this. So, we have uh, all these things have been done, but uh, right now uh, these things do not open uh, in this uh, what you call um, like, uh, the monitor software. So, <coughs> any of you are interested I suggest you try it. If you try it, these things come in solid works assembly, solid work uh, what you call uh, part drawings and then we have uh, other uh, solid uh, <coughs> what you call uh, files which 
can be used in three places. I told you, you know, once you make the solid module, you can use it to convert it into a way for fabricating the items and the same file can also be used in 3D printing. Why 3D printing? Why all this is? is to make it into full scale because as of now buying a special type of aluminum which is a aluminum, silicon, magnesium, machinable, you know what you call coldly packed uh, extrusion is still expensive and you cannot get it in a small quantities. If I just want a what you call 200 mm by 150 mm piece and which is uh, probably 50 mm thick or 225 mm thick pieces difficult searching ordering itself makes a problem. But instead the same thing say to half scale it will easily printed using our usual 3D printing machine. The moment you have it in a 3D printing machine now you can take them close them and then put yourself for a discussion and the same unit can be used by all the people involved. I am from the mechanical and uh, fabrication and what you call integration uh, person. So, while I have shown you a small part about how to fabricate it and how to print it. Now, if you take that big box, big enclosure, it has so many other things. It is built for electronics and it is if you recollect in the earlier uh, what they call the video file, you would have seen large number of very, very large number of electronics parts everywhere it is full of wires, it is full of uh, I do not know connectors and, and everything unlike low power electronics everything the minimum voltage is 400 volt RMS. So, something like 600 volt RMS I mean 600 volt peak uh, voltage is present everywhere risky business. So, that whole thing if you have to simulate in a scale model and keep it, it will be useful everywhere I expect this is what people have been doing all along. So, let me see. So, we have here so many of these uh, things. So, go to your NPTEL uh, wherever it is these are all public uh, what you call in the public domain. So, you will notice while my part is this which I thought now I need to stress. So, I had kept this towards the end. In reality, I kept it towards the end so that uh, you know you will appreciate. Please have a I mean uh, look at this lecture. A lot of it depends on so called now industrial design. So, well design we know very well it is part art and part uh, this thing in the case of this here design is meant for producing in an industry and unlike conventional you know simple design whether you like it or not all our things involve having an aesthetic appeal products look good even if you are to buy a I do not know mobile phone or uh, if you are to buy an audio apparatus or uh, if you are to buy a TV or a monitor or best is biggest black box is the system unit or the CP unit of your uh, computer, but still lot of aesthetics are built into it. It looks like people want it whether you like it or not. Then how easy you use these ergonomics, then the functionality, how functional they are and finally, marketability. In the case of marketability it is not about selling, but it is about creating a position in the user's mind saying I need it, I am going to get it. So, design involves all these things and probably uh, these our you know uh, this you know physical prototyping techniques help us towards this. So, my suggestion is you no know, kindly go to this other uh, what do you call thing which uh, I have recorded and you will be able to see things. Not long ago there was this thing about pigeon holing saying I am a electrical engineer and then he is a mechanical engineer or he is a production engineer, he is not a machine design person. So, all activities everything have been pigeonholed. Right now, 
at least in the case of enclosure design or any products design we end up with this pigeon holing will not help. You see here we have 9 uh, holes, but there are 10 pigeons. So, probably that is mine is not I am the 10th pigeon <laughs> 2 pigeons are stuck in that I am supposed to do the fabrication part I am supposed to do all the non electrical part and the electrical itself has been spread. So, there is an EMI expert then there is a expert who works in uh, what you call uh, low power electronics earlier anything less than a watt was called low power right now no everything has become ultra low power. So, people are talking about milli milli watts milli watts total when energy harvesting comes milliwatt. Similarly, other extreme we have very high voltage high power people and interconnection people are separate and uh, devices circuits and all that. Now, this does not hold good anymore. Some of you have been out uh, may have discovered what is this uh, what you call alien attack. I think you know it I will leave it uh, listening it is not an alien neither they are uh, what you call something which is you know walking and trying to attack you, but then it does keep you happy. Seen that aha now we know that no all design is emotional design it sort of flashed and went off. Let me take it back and say whether my aliens are still there see aliens are attacking us actually the issue is about we love or hate everyday things. So, it is for you to make things and even things like this very complicated thing can easily be simulated made in a computer and printed. Now, again coming back to the printing uh, option the whole thing can probably printed in one go, but uneconomical instead it would be easy if you make one uh, let us say these three like separately and uh, we have this uh, I do not know the actual uh, uh, citrus squeezer and uh, print it and then uh, eventually you know attach it together we have a very nice product. So, allow me to just you know I myself I seem to be loving my voice uh, this uh, this should be the end after that no I will stop. Not long ago <laughs> while that was the over the world design here we have a beehive you have seen that no. I am not going into the philosophy or what you call unfairness of nature that you know there are so many more workers for uh, other than a queen thing is all of them do all the work seen that no it is a beehive of activity, but together the output is stolen by humans which is sad but the bees are required without the bees we do not seem to be able to survive is it not eliminating all the bees does not. So, you can go to the YouTube channel and uh, look up all these things. One small part of it is my what you call what I have covered and uh, this last part was about a uh, what you call 20 hour session about how to make small products and so on and you need to build all the things including all the you know small type of uh, connectors, wires, then uh, I do not know displays, clamps everything you need to have a repository of all these things available. And for making a physical prototype well they are very very useful when you want to actually manufacture it and make an enclosure if you have it with you you can always take a measurement. So, if you have this I can take a measurement take a vernier find out diameter in each thing and then inside here now if I open it there is a switch somewhere and there is something here I do not know what exactly it is probably it is a yeah something which prevents uh, scratching here anti scratch uh, something I can not see anything and then there is something which is detected as a eraser while if I do here it does filling if I do this entities are erased not easy no somebody has made it the beauty is this can easily be made by you if you go around searching on the thing this is only an introduction uh, what you call a thing so far I have given. So, I can say best of luck for you and uh, two or three things is 
in the initial stage probably you need to get something like this stick and observe it when you open it see how well they have integrated everything you see here we have a a box in which they have in put so many things together I am sure if you are a normal person you would have had so many failed uh, oh spoiled devices like this. So, inside you know how this scroll wheel works and how these buttons work and how the whole thing is there and then little bit of what they call ergonomics what I was telling you know as a place you can hold it to squeeze and you see in the four corners no very very critical things they have given here saying there is a a small foot which slides easily. The same thing in another uh, what you call instance it will be something which will should not slide even with its natural weight given so many grams it should not move. In this case even if you have to lean on it and push it moves smoothly. So, this part of is a functional thing we think it is a very minor matter of detail. So, if you work out all these things and including all this enclosure this whole thing now probably making another mouse is easy. And uh, going back to the adage by marketing people if you make if you build a better mouse trap the world will beat a path to your door. Fortunately, mouse are stronger they live mice mice are stronger and same thing with chairs apparel anything you wear the ultimate has not yet happened. I have a funny chair here maybe you can have a look at it. Every time we buy a new chair we will find that that is in some other way no it is a compromise compared to that old fixed you know wooden chair seem to make sense for old people like us meaning I can grip I can put force and get up if I try to do with one of these easy moving things the chair will move away and it look like one of uh, McLaurin's movies saying a cherry tail saying how a man you know the what they call uh, tries to sit on the chair how it keeps moving away. Now, for me unless I keep uh, doing it this chair is not the ultimate design. So, obviously, somebody will improve the design and for each of these things the easiest way is for you to make a physical prototype. To make a physical prototype uh, not long ago about 20 years back was tough you had to depend on carpenters you have to depend on pipe benders you have to depend on workshops and all that. Now, right now you can easily create a 3D model and once the 3D model is available it is a small scale things you can print. So, it is limitless if you are to make a new table fan we are all familiar with normal pedestal fans you are familiar with table fans now you are familiar with regular ceiling fans and there are so many so many many more and some of you would have seen the small USB fan and then the one and only so called bladeless hidden blade Dyson fan. So, if you go and check for the what you call Dyson look alike or clones you will be tempted to make it one critical part about the Dyson fan is the way they are flown. So, we have a annular ring and which has a peculiar profile air is blown through it. Now, that those profiles and all that it is very easy like what I showed you yesterday you have to make a proper air flow profile in any of your uh, article using any of your surface modeling software. Next you have an axis of revolution the whole device is ready and the whole device can be printed. So, if you want to make a bladeless fan in which blades are mounted at the base and then you made the annular ring and then make the thing flow you can start and you can have a bladeless fan which is probably USB driven. So, I will stop here thank you uh, for patiently what do you call uh, listening to all this and uh, two or three things is I would like to, to acknowledge the various sources which I have taken some of them which are already there on the what you call as I have you know started searching on the internet right in front of you. It is semi public information and I have acknowledged it fully I full support it and the occasional software which I have used they are all trial software or 
licensed for our institution. But in your case, I suggest you buy one. Even the what do you call simplest solid uh, any software, uh, individual for uh, what do you call simple hacking purposes. Hacking means not for cracking the software. For you to use it does not cost too much. Maybe good one you should get for about you know very good commercial works for everything maybe 500 dollars very simple thing around 200 dollars you can pay and uh, get it alternatively you can share with your friends but it is unlikely that anybody you know will be you know making use of them alone you will be part of some entity so buy the full fledged software and then use it uh, you know wisely and if you acknowledge all the sources you can always file a IP for whatever product you can think of. You, we are all familiar with this, no? Eyeglasses, monocle, something here. If you are uh, one of these, what you call old time things, you have a monocle, they have a chain, and you know somebody takes and does it. And then you have a latest, I will call it <laughs> binocular without this side things, it sits on the nose. Those things you can now make. If you want to make a what you call that over the nose reading glasses very easy to print and in fact, you can probably go and buy because this is expensive. This is a regularly progressive um, coated uh, photochromic and uh, so on. It is a trifocal progressive glass. So, I would not try, uh, try it on that, but however, you can go to your uh, what you call optometrist or optist and buy. You have 50 mm glasses, you have also 40 and then if you search around you get probably you know 32 mm glasses are available. Take two 30 mm round glasses and then make a frame which sits neatly on your nose end. You can probably mold this, you can mold or better still go to a surgeon and have two notches built into your nose. You can always make it sit there, so it will not fall off and uh, in my case no it would not interfere with my hearing aid. So, best of luck, thank you, I will uh, sign off here.